Podcast 7 of the Pelvis and Perineum series, The Pelvic Floor. This podcast will give a general overview of the walls and floor of the pelvic cavity. The pelvis is bounded posteriorly, laterally and anteriorly. Posteriorly, there is the sacrum and coccyx. The lateral walls of the pelvic cavity are formed mainly by piriformis, the obturator foramen and its overlying membrane, the obturator membrane, and the obturator internus muscle. Lying medial to obturator internus muscle is the obturator fascia, and this has a thickened tendinous arch that extends from the pubic body to the ischial spine. This tendinous arch offers the attachment sites for the elevator ani group of pelvic floor muscles and I'll detail these later on. Running along obturator internus muscle can be found the obturator nerve, artery and vein. Finally, the antero-inferior wall of the pelvic cavity is formed by the pubic symphysis and the superior and inferior rami of the two pubic bones. Remember that in the anatomical position, the pelvic girdle is tilted anteriorly so that the anterior superior iliac spines and the pubic symphysis are in the same vertical plane. This arrangement means that the weight of the bladder is supported by this antero-inferior wall. So now let's turn to the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor can also be known as the pelvic diaphragm, and this is made up of a thin sheet of muscles which are bounded above and below by pelvic fascia. This pelvic diaphragm separates the pelvis superiorly from the perineum inferiorly, and I'll describe the perineum in a later podcast. So the pelvic diaphragm, or the pelvic floor, consists of a thin sheet of muscle made up from coccygeus and levator ani. Levator ani can be further divided into three parts puborectalis, pubococcygeus, and iliococcygeus. Let's look at coccygeus first. Coccygeus extends from the inferior portion of the sacrum and the coccyx to the ischial spine, running deep to the sacrospinous ligament. Remember we have two of these muscles, one on either side of the pelvis. Immediately above coccygeus, but not considered part of the pelvic floor, as it leaves the pelvis via the greater cytic foramen, is piriformis. So piriformis isn't part of this pelvic floor. If we now turn to levator ani, this is broader than coccygeus and forms the bulk of the pelvic floor muscle. The three parts of levator ani, puborectalis, pubococcygeus, and iliococcygeus, all converge at a central midline of the pelvis where they unite with the contralateral levator ani muscles. This muscular hammock formed from levator ani suspends and supports the pelvic viscera. In order for the urinary, reproductive and digestive system to be in contact with the outside world for micturition, sexual intercourse and defecation, Apertures are observed in the pelvic floor for the urethra, vagina and anus. These three structures pass through the pelvic floor via the urogenital hiatus anteriorly and the anorectal hiatus posteriorly. In this midline, where the pelvic floor muscles converge, two fibromuscular masses which help to stabilise the pelvic floor are observed. Between the urogenital and anorectal hiatus is the perineal body, and between the anorectal hiatus and the coccyx is the anococcygeal body. These two fibromuscular masses are important in maintaining the integrity of the pelvic floor muscles. So the precise details of where the levator ani's muscles attach isn't overly important, but their names give you a significant clue. To briefly go over them, for puborectalis, 
This is a U-shaped muscle that extends from the posterior surface of both the left and right pubic bones to sweep behind the anorectal junction and it borders the urogenital hiatus. This U-shaped muscle has an important role in maintaining faecal continence by pulling the anorectal junction anteriorly and this creates an acute angle between the rectum and the anus, the so-called anorectal angle. This angle is important in, like I said, maintaining faecal continence. Relaxation of this muscle reduces this angle, straightening the anorectal junction, allowing faeces to pass through during defecation. The two remaining levator ani muscles, pubococcygeus and iliococcygeus, come from the tendinous arch and ischial spines, and these converge in the midline at the perineal body, coccyx, and the anococcygeal ligament. Collectively, these pelvic floor muscles are important at rest to ensure faecal and urinary continence, especially when you sneeze, cough, lift heavy items, or forcefully expire, which increases the intra-abdominal pressure. So in this podcast, I've given a general overview of the walls and floor of the pelvis. In the next podcast, number eight, I will describe the perineum.